Okay, so we are in the um, study group. I uh, mentioned this earlier, but um, for those that are joining here in the future or just now had, had joined, um, there's kind of Murphy's Law um, kind of got a hold of me <laughs> this time around. So um, the Cisco DevNet sandboxes, um, I wanted to use those for those folks that didn't have a lab environment because you can, you can you know, go to them normally um, whenever you'd like and you can reserve time in them. And uh, more specifically, the sandbox that we use is for the um, Cisco modeling labs. And there's actually two of those sandboxes. So I'm going to uh, point out the one that you'll want. It gives you like up to four hours, but it has more memory. Um, the other one you can reserve it. It's called the CML Enterprise, but it has um, half the amount of RAM and it's really not enough for our topology, but you can reserve it for a longer period of time. So um, neither one of those are available today because there is a scheduled um, downtime, but unfortunately the notice only goes up like the day before. So um, we don't have a sandbox, but um, don't worry. Um, most of what we're doing today is just showing you how to use that stuff. We're not really getting too much into um, the nitty gritty of configuring Ansible. We're kind of like setting the stage for that. So um, I have an environment. So whenever it's down, I created like my own mirror of the, um, you know, using the same IP addresses and topology that is that we're going to use um, in the study group. So I can always demo through things if it were to be down. And um, normally they're not down that often, um, so we should be good for a while. But um, if that does happen, um, and if you prefer not to use the sandboxes, you could use like a CML, which used to be called viral. Um, CML-P is the personal edition. Um, I think that's like $200 subscription a year or something like that. And you can have up to 20 devices. You can do that um, and just use the same IPs that we're using. Um, there's a topology file in the repo um, that we'll go through and um, has all the IP addressing and, and the like. So you can just build your topology to, to look like that. And uh, if you have GNS or um, EVNG or something else like that, um, if you can get Cisco CSR 1000 Vs and Nexus switches running, then you're good to go there as well. But um, I'm going to, um, you know, walk through everything from the lens of using that sandbox. So that way for folks that are getting started that don't have their own lab and are new to Ansible, we can kind of all be on the same page. But if you're a little bit more advanced and have some of these other things, feel free um, to just adjust as needed. And um, if, you, if you run into issues, feel free to use the Discord um, chat that we have and we can communicate there as well. So um, I, I paste that link into the chat earlier. Uh, if someone joined later, you may not see that link. I think that happens if you have to be like there when it happens. So let me um, let me just jump over and just do it one more time. If you came in later, you may not see it. But this link just takes you into our general room, and then there's another room for the study group. But um, either one. Um, you know, feel free to ask questions if you, you know, run into any obstacles. Um, if I'm not online, maybe somebody else can can help out too. Feel free to help each other out and that type of thing or to bring up, you know, different um, topics and stuff. Oh, and by the way, thanks to everyone that did um, provide some feedback on topics. I have a pretty hearty list to keep us going for a while. But um, if you do think of something in particular that um, you'd like to see, uh, go ahead and either, you know, you can chat you know, create a message in the uh, meetup group or do it in the Discord server. And um, I'll try my best to get it, um, you know, rolled into one of our events coming up. All right, so um, what we're gonna do, and let me um, make sure I don't have anything else after this. I think that, yeah, this is these are just some resources that were in the first session as well. So these are just here for you as a reference. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go, um, or what I'm going to do, and wh what you'll see me going through is the lab guide. So um, this lab guide is here. I started on February 3rd, so that's what that date is. And then I put um, dates in to kind of be like placeholders for the session that we're on. But um, if you're going through this lab guide, feel free to go ahead. But what you'll notice is this lab guide is not complete. Um, I just started working on it, you know, last week. And I'm going to continue to work on it so you'll see it grow over time. And it'll just um, continue to be this document here. So the link will not change. 
It's just that um, I'm going to add, you know, additional um, information. Or if something's broken, and if you notice that, let me know, and then we, we can um, edit it, you know, fix it up in here. So this has the link to that same Discord um, chat server. And then um, this is the sandbox. So this is the one that you typically uh, would want to reserve. But unfortunately, you can't do that today. But um, this link should take you there. So let me um, see what happens. I'll probably have to log in, though. Yeah. So another um, thing here, too, is you can sign up for free if you haven't used the Cisco Sandbox before. Um, you just sign up and you can use, I think there's like a handful of different um, options. Um, typically, I would recommend if you have like the Cisco CCO login, just use that one so it's not confusing like what email it's sending you your um, lab information, which um, is needed because every time you reserve something, it sends you like your username and password and your VPN link. So definitely want to use an email that, that you're um, you know, expecting that information to come back to. So I'm going to log in and I use the Cisco one. You could use really any of those, but just make sure your email is good for that. And um, I accidentally clicked on something. So let me, oops. Oh, I see what that was going on there. Where were you? Should be, normally it's at the bottom. Yeah, you can find sandbox. But the, the link, because I clicked on something, it took me out of there. But um, this is the main sandbox landing page. Get this out of the way. Um, and you we can't do anything because they're offline. But um, from the screen and um, looking at the study guide, you can see the screenshots of what you'll expect to find when you go to it. So one of the things to um, call out is when you click on it and you go to reserve it, it'll say two hours, but you can just click on this, this pen and then four hours is actually the maximum amount of time. So you can up it to four hours. And what you'll see is after it comes online, it's gonna send you um, through an email, your credentials. And the username should stay the same. And I don't know why I have this funky username. I used to be a Cisco employee, so it was just, you know, that username. But um, now with partner access, it gives me this weird username. But it's it's the same every time. Just the password will be different. And notice this port. This port will be different. Um, another thing that you have to do if you haven't done so already is you have to have um, either an AnyConnect client, which I would recommend if, you know, if you're using Windows or a Mac. They do have one for Linux, but you have to go to CCO to download that. Um, but you may already have like an open uh, VPN client. Um, that's what I have. So um, if you have that, that works fine too. The other thing to um, note is in this um, email, there's also a link into like your lab environment that you really don't have to go into this um, this tool that kind of shows like your virtual machines running, unless you have an issue. Um, I've had to go in there before to reset um, ARP. So my ARP got messed up and I, I was able to go in there and then clear it out and then my pod worked a lot better. Um, you could also like reboot servers and that type of thing. Um, so just note that you do have this link. And um, another thing is that um, depending on how you want to connect to this pod, uh, regardless, you have to use the VPN, but once you connect the VPN, you can either use from the jump box, there's, um, you know, they have a, a, like a VNC type of front end um, so that you can um, connect to it and use the desktop. But um, I, I really don't recommend that one because it's kind of laggy, but there's like a browser based SSH, but it's kind of clunky with how the clipboard works. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, my preferred way is just to connect the VPN and then I SSH into the jump box and then just use it from a command line that way. And um, that's just the, the way that I prefer to do it. Um, but regardless, whatever you do, um, it's there and it's gone after the session. So you need to remember to save your work. And I'll show you how to save your work, which is critical because as you're going through these labs, some of these labs build on each other and you're going to want to save your work. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to save our work to a repo so that way we can continue to move forward. And as you go through these labs and if you're studying for the exam, which is the, um, the Red Hat Ansible um, Specialist for Network Automation,
then you're going to want to go through these labs a bunch of times. So you don't always want to rebuild everything. You might just want to do one section. So it's going to be a lot better for you to kind of have your own repo and um, to have, you know, your completed labs and, and your own alterations to stuff and to keep, you know, an artifact of that. So um, one of the things that we're doing is we're not um, using the default topology that's a part of the Cisco modeling lab. So the Cisco modeling lab that I can't log in and show you is really just a tool much like other tools that have like the nested virtualization where you can bring up routers and switches and firewalls and the like and um, interconnect them together and create a topology. So um, it does that. It's just the topology that they have. Um, I'm making one that is a, a little bit more in line with what you would expect to see, like if you were to take the certification. So you become more familiar kind of, you know, in that environment. So I have a topology file. And um, if you click on this link, you can just download it. But it also, whenever you clone it, and clone is like part of the Git terminology that you're going to learn, um, you can bring it down that way too. So, um, but if you just want this up front in the beginning, and you just go into their CML and, and import it, then you'll have your topology. Um, another thing that you can do that we'll talk about uh, more in, in um, subsequent study groups is you can save your topology that has your routers config in it. So that way, if you want your router to kind of start in a state that's not so, um, you know, like it's more you know, configured with more things like BGP or whatever, you can save that topology and the router will come up with that configuration. Um, or you could always start from kind of like the baseline and then use your playbooks, you know, to bring you back up to speed, depending on where you're at. So um, in this file, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is a YAML file. It's not a playbook. This is a topology file. And this is how you define your topology. And you can see that there's router configuration um, in here. So each one of those routers is represented with a configuration and also the physical links that are virtual because it's not you know, real connections. But um, we're interconnecting them through interfaces. And this is what creates the, um, the topology. So when you import that, it's going to use um, this particular topology. Um, one way that you can have this file locally and you can go uh, to this link if you want to now, because this is online. Let me put this in the chat room. Okay. So you can go there, and um, once you're there, you can download it from right here. You can also download any of your files this way, but um, what you're gonna learn is an alternative that's more as a code kind of way, like GitOps kind of way, and we're gonna do um, Git clones and other Git commands because um, you do need to know Git to some extent if you were to take the certification. Now, if you're joining a study group and you have no intentions of taking the certification, um, you're still going to get value out of this because a lot of the, the, uh, the skills and things that we're doing here with Ansible, you could apply them to other certs too. So like you need some level of Ansible experience for all the DevNet certs. So um, it would help you in that regard too. But um, if you're going for the Ansible certification, I'm going to provide updates because that is um, kind of in a process of like, it's sort of like, been around a while and they're going to update it so the team that's updating it is going to give me some insights so that i can kind of keep you guys on the same or on the right track right so we'll cover things that are important and um in the meantime we'll kind of cover from like sort of more like traditional things and then we'll talk about some of the newer stuff too and i'll try to present them both so that you can um compare and contrast but also see you know how the solutions are evolving and how we do it today versus how we used to do it and then kind of meet in the middle of what's actually, you know, on the certification. So um, let me get back to where'd you go? I think I lost my. Or let me bring up another one. All right. So back to the study guide. So once you have connectivity and you upload your topology, um, this is speaking to like how you can connect to it. So in the um, topology tool in DevNet, you can right click on um, CML and then you can connect 
you know, through your web browser, or you could just put in the IP address in your web browser, but this way, you know, they just have like a shortcut. And then DevBox, you can also click there and that'll bring up different options for connecting to the DevBox, which is like a jump server. So um, in terms of like using this topology, it doesn't run very well unless you turn off the, um, the default topology. So this is what it's called, multi-platform network. So this tile is already there when you log into the modeling lab. So when you go to the, you know, the web page of it and you log into its landing page, you're gonna see this tile. Um, you wanna stop it. And then wait a couple of minutes for all of the devices to actually stop. So you might have to click on the tile and then just make sure they stop. Sometimes they don't all stop. So I just manually click on whatever's left and then right click on it and then stop them that way. And uh, what you want is once it's all stopped, you wanna import, so from the dashboard, there's this import import button, import the, the topology, this topology that we downloaded. And then um, once it's in there, which would be here, you can click on this go to lab and then it'll bring up the topology. So this is the topology that we're gonna work from. So it has um, three routers, a core and two distribution routers, and then two Nexus switches. So all of our scenarios either have something to do with, you know, layer two types of things or routing, you know, types of scenarios. And we'll be able to do all that in this topology. But um, if, again, if you run this and the other one at the same time, it's gonna have all sorts of errors because you're gonna exhaust the amount of RAM uh, that they make available for you in that CML. So you'll start that and wait for it. And then um, when um, that is running, normally what I do is bring up my connectivity to that jump box. So you don't have to use the jump box. I kind of expressed this a couple of times in the first session, um, but I would recommend it, especially if you're getting started, because um, you'll have connectivity directly from everything in that jump box. And the lab guide can be set up to where you know it's always from that perspective. Um, but you could run these things through the VPN directly from your laptop. But just keep in mind that <clears throat> when you're doing that, you're just going to have to make sure that you have everything installed. And that could be a bit difficult, like especially for Windows users, because there's a lot of you know additional settings through the Windows subsystem for Linux and all this stuff. Um, I didn't want to get into the nuances of that. I wanted us to kind of get started and let's work this way, which is easy. And then as we... Um, you know, over time, as everyone feels comfortable, then um, what we'll probably start doing is have a couple sessions on installing the right way um, to be able to run the AEP, which is the um, controller and what used to be tower. And we need rel for that. So eventually, if you want to do that, um, you're going to have a VM running that has rel and has the AEP installed on it. And then when we connect the VPN, you'll be able to use that with these routers. But um, that's further down the road. And um, if that doesn't work for anybody, I have some AAP controllers um, as a backup that we can use um, to um, give folks a way of using, you know, to get familiar with AAP. Because if you're taking the certification, um, if you do it today, it has tower in it, uh, but they're updating that and it'll have the controller. And you have to be familiar with the GUI UI and, you know, just the basics of configuring through there directly. So that'll give you a way of um, studying for that part. But there's so much to learn command line wise that we really don't need to worry about that for quite some time because we have a lot of, um, you know, ground to cover, you know, just from a command line um, perspective. So one of the ways um, that you can do this is you can right click um, on the dev box and this is a browser based SSH. So if you don't even have SSH like putty or something installed, you can do it this way and then uh, it'll just show up in your browser. But the problem with this is that if you want to copy and paste out of the lab guide or you know from something else, then um, you have to do this control shift alt and it brings up this window and then you paste in whatever you actually want to paste. And once it's in here, you can do a control V and it'll paste it um, into that. So it's kind of a clunky experience. So what I prefer is just regular old, good old SSH through the VPN. And the, um, the user is developer and the password is this capital C1SCO 12345. And you connect in um, using whatever, like I have Linux, so it's just a regular terminal for me, but it could be putty, you know, whatever you want to use. Then um, you just, once you have the VPN, obviously these IPs aren't going to work until you're connected to the VPN. 
So that IP is the same for everybody. Everybody always has the same IPs. Um, what, you know, you're connected to a VPN and everything's the exact same for everybody. So um, you can create, you know, whatever you want. If you're using secure CRT or whatever it is, you can just make a profile for these and use them over and over. Um, if you connect with RDP, so back here, like if you right click on this thing and you do the RDP, then it gives you like a VNC desktop. I think it uses something called guacamole is the actual way that you connect to this thing. But the problem with it is like it gives you a terminal and all that, but sometimes it's slow. Like it takes like a few minutes for this screen to come up. And then every once in a while, it just seems like it's kind of laggy. So this is not my preferred way, but this does work. And then um, once you have that, what you want to do is initially you want to pull down all of the lab files. So earlier it was just like downloading it, you know, to your laptop so you could upload it into um, the CML to create your topology. This way here, you would be on the dev box. So you would connect, you'd SSH, you would be on that dev box. All right, so this is the one that's in my lab. So right now I just have these two folders in here. You won't see these. Yours will just, I think it's just kind of empty or there might be a folder or something in there. But this is the, you know, the home directory for DevBox. So you've logged in with developer and that Cisco password. And then the first thing you want to do is you want to pull down that repo. And then you want to change directories into it. And then you notice you have these files. So these are just some skeleton files that we use to get started. But um, you're going to continue to pull this one down. We use it a little bit differently in the beginning because we haven't created like our own um, project yet. But over time, you're going to pull this down because I'm going to be adding additional files into here. And you want to pull these down. And there's a thing, a command called git pull. So you'll have updated files. But uh, in parallel to this, what you're going to want to do is you're also going to want to have this other repo. So another thing that, um, just a real quick install, this already has Ansible installed and it's an older version, but it's okay because most of what we're doing is kind of legacy stuff in the beginning. So we're not really upgrading anything because it's going to tell us that we have Ansible already in here. And I really don't need you to upgrade because um, that could cause additional issues. So this is really just going to say it's already there. If it weren't there, then it'll install but it should already be there. But we don't have this Python filter for, called net adder. So we do need this for some of the stuff that we're going to do. So it should install that. Uh, mine has already installed that. So I think it's going to tell me the same thing. So Cisco. But when you log into this, that is not installed. So there's nothing to do, right? So you'll have Ansible installed. It should be version 2.9 is what they had in there. But you won't have this. So you should see this install, this net adder. And then you'll be good to go if we use this filter for anything that we're doing in the study group, which we're not for a while, but just note that you'll need to, to do that. If, we, if you get an error that says missing this module, then you'll know to go back to here and install it. So um, that's just something just for your reference to point out. But what's important today is this, is we need to be able to set up our own uh, repo because this is where we're going to collect our own work over time. So um, as we're going through this, I'm going to make a change. And this is just like a real quick change, but this is just to, so we can keep our work, right? So um, Ansible version, right? This command will tell us what version is going to be um, the 2.9. 2 but like one thing that I want to show you is um, I provided you with this Ansible config, and it should find that. And we'll talk more about all the things you can do with the Ansible config file. But um, here it's just mainly like an example, but we're going to use this a lot so that we can override some of the defaults. So the default settings in Ansible, we can manipulate a lot of them and change them to what we want um, using the ansible.config. So um, in here, it'll find it because I'm in this directory. So this becomes my working directory, like my project project um, directory and um, it should be able to find it so don't worry about this python stuff this is just because this uh, laptop needs to be updated you'll have 3.9 
in the one that you get from Cisco. But this is showing you like what's in here. And you can see here, it found this config file in that folder, right? So it, it's aware of it. So it'll look at that for um, configurations. So right now, there's really nothing in it. I think there's just one line. Yeah, so you can see here that all it has is this under defaults, we're overriding the defaults. So one of the overrides is for um, gathering facts that we'll talk about later. Um, if you don't explicitly turn it off, then you have to, um, in your playbook, use false to turn it off. So this is just something that's normally on. We're just saying, just turn it off by default. So I would have to actually turn it on uh, manually if I wanted to use it. So this is just an example of a default configuration that was changed. So um, that's in there. So if we were to change this file and add something else, um, and how do we change files from the command line on this dev box? Um, we're gonna use them because that's what we're left using um, in the exam. So a lot of you probably are more familiar with using something like this. This is VS Code, Microsoft's um, Visual Studio Code. So I like this, I prefer this, but um, this could actually cause you some issues. So it's better for you to, to work the way that you're gonna have to work. So you'll be more familiar with it. So we're going to use Vim. And um, I do have some links in the study guide that show you like how to do commands in Vim to make it a little bit easier. And you can see, you know, here's what we saw when I catted that file. That's what's in the file. Um, it's telling us to add this. So what this does is it overrides the default for um, SSH to do a check to see if, um, if it's in our known host. So Basically, like if the I, if a device looks like it's using the same IP, then this is a like a protection mechanism in SSH to say, hey, you know, this might be um, someone that um, is masking something, right? So um, what we're doing is for um, this lab is we're going to turn that off because we're going to keep connecting to different things over and over again that may change. And um, in our lab environment, we're really not that worried about it. So this is telling Ansible to ignore that check. Sometimes when you paste it, um, you have to remember to, to, to hit I for insert. Otherwise, you'll lose like the first couple of characters and just be aware of that. Make sure it looks the way you think before you save it. So to save this file, you have to escape and then type colon and then WQ and bang. And now it's in there. So if I cat it, it should still be there. But we've only saved it locally, so this will go away. So the whole point of this is what we want to do is we want to go to GitLab. And if you haven't used GitLab, you need to go there and create um, a free account. See, with me, it just takes me right in because I'm already logged in. But for you, if you haven't connected to them and logged in before like that, then um, you're going to need to create an account. So once you create an account, um, then you're going to be able, uh, at that point, you'll be able to create a project. And um, that's what we're getting ready to do. So if you haven't already done that, you can do this later. You know, because and this is recorded for those of you that are joining us later. And make sure that you sign up, create an account, and what you're going to want to do is create a new um, project. So what happens is, is once you're logged in, you go to like your landing page, and you'll see this button to create um, a new project. And what you're going to want to do is um, this is always like your username. So if you see like examples that have my name, TWL one, that's mine. It's not going to work for you. So this is just here as like a placeholder. Um, this is going to be your username that you use, you know, to create this GitLab. And you're going to name it uh, My Project. And just go ahead and um, select Public. So that way, um, this is another way that you can show me like your playbooks if you're having an issue. And I'll be able to go to them and see them in your repo and um, make suggestions on what you could do, you know, to, to fix it or whatever. As well as I'll have some repos with the solutions too that you can go and check. I'll call it My Solutions. And you'll be able to go and check that way as well. But um, go ahead and do that and click on initialize with the readme. So it's just going to create like this generic uh, readme file. But this is going to be like a project that's ready to go for you to be able to clone it down 
um, into your dev box. So in order to do that, you got to find the link for it and copy it from this clipboard. So um, I already have one run in here. Well, that's that. I think it's over here. Or one of these. Yeah, my project. So I already created my project earlier, so I'm not going to do another one. But like when I go into my project, and you can search for it, like if you're not on that screen anymore, search for my project. So go into your project, and you'll notice this button clone. That's where those links are. Um, do not use this one, SSH, because you'll have to use a key for that to work. Um, you're going to want to use this one, HTTPS. We can use usernames and passwords for that, so it's a little bit easier. So you'll copy that, and then you'll be in your dev box. And you don't want to do it from inside this particular folder. You want to change directories and go up. And let me bring the, the lab guide back up. The lab guide has the, you know, actually what I'm doing as well. So let me um, move that out of the way so you can kind of see what's going on over there. So uh, once I change directories back, right, so I'm in the home directory. Um, now what I can do is I can, I can clone that down. So it should be back here. Way up here, you yeah, should be over here. So um, this one is just a placeholder. It says username. So mine is actually going to be the one that I grabbed out of that clipboard. So git clone. So now I have um, this is the one for me that could have additional files. So you're going to want to grab that one, and then this is my project. So my project right now, let me change directories to it. Has these files in it. And that was because I was messing with stuff earlier. So yours won't. Yours doesn't have anything in it. So at this point, uh, what you're really going to want to do is you need to grab at least like these, you know, you want the starter files that are in here. And then as you're editing them, you're saving them in your my project folder and then that's what we're going to save in our repo or what you're going to save in your own repo so the first part what it's talking about now is changing directories back into the ansible one and the dot dot goes back goes up a level back a directory all right so i'm in here i've got these files um i already have them but you won't right so what it's telling you is you're going to copy um, the files over um, into your project. So these are the files that um, that we need. And then as we have additional labs, I'll have sections in there that say like, hey, pull that down and copy these, you know, these new files into your my project. So right now all we need are these. You don't want to copy everything because this is a repo and it's going to pick up other files and it'll, it'll actually mess some things up. So you want to um, you want to copy those over. Um, oh, and also this YAML file is our topology. But you may have already manually grabbed that one anyway already. But just go ahead and you'll get those. And then the destination you have to go back a directory, and it's your my project. Right. So if since I already had something in there, all it does is it, it overwrites them. So that's why you have to be careful. Is like. Just keep in mind that um, you don't want to keep copying things that you that you don't want to overwrite. Because as you're adding stuff to the inventory or whatever, you don't want to copy those over again because you already have them in your my directory. Only anything that's new. And I'll try to, you know, I'll point that out in red, like, hey, this is just a new file that you're copying over. Don't copy over any of the other stuff. But the problem is, is like you only have this locally. So there's only so much time in your lab, and then your lab's going to stop. So what you want to do is you want to be able to save your work. So you go back into your my project, right? And you've got whatever we worked on at that time. So right now you have this, and then here's some Git commands. And don't, uh, it's okay. To, these take a while to remember, right? So just use this as a cheat sheet. 
Um, one thing you have to do is you have to tell you, tell it what your username is in the GitLab. So whatever that was, remember what that is. So you're going to need that. So mine is tdubial1. And then um, the email has to be, like it requires an email, but it doesn't matter what it is. So I just put this dummy email in there as a placeholder. My mouse is funky. Come on. You just have to have something in there. So that's in there. Now what I can do is a git add, and all these commands are in here, right? So I'm just going to add everything that's in my folder this time. So what I've done is I've staged it into my repo. And then um, I'm done with making changes, so I'm going to commit it. I just pretty much call everything initial until I do something very specific. Um, this comment is for us to see. So we can go back into commits. And, and we'll talk about Git in more detail later. But you'll be able to go back in time and kind of figure out what things are based off of your descriptions. So I committed it, right? But it's still local. I have to push it. So pushing it pushes it to GitLab. But it, it's asking me for my username, so I have to log in. So you'll, you'll use whatever yours is. So now it's it's um it's updated it. So everything that's in here has been um, updated from what's in my folder right now. And then you can do a status just to make sure that they're both on the same page. And it says that you know there's nothing to commit, everything's clean. So we're good here. So just remember, like as you're doing these labs, this is something that's gonna happen, you know, over and over again. You're gonna want to save your work back to your repo uh, before your session's over. And then that way you'll you'll have it permanently, and um, you need to be able to do this in the exam too. So it's it's just needed um, skill set. So it, um, it's definitely you know you'll it'll become like muscle memory, right? Um, so um, in terms of like the study group today, um, that's it, right? So we're going to reconvene on March seventeenth, and we'll start to do more um, configuration. But um, hopefully, unless for some reason Cisco has, you know, another downtime, but hopefully you'll be able to get yours, um, you know, for that session so you can work along with me. I would recommend having two screens so that you can work on your screen and watch what I'm doing on my screen. And then if, if that's too, um, if you don't prefer that, um, you can also just watch me and then you can go in afterwards because after every session, I'm going to have the recording um, and the link to the slides and any links that we talk about. And that study guide is always going to be there. So you'll be able to go through um, the study guide and you always have the Discord um, server as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and turning off, well actually before I turn off this recording, and I know we're like at the end of this, does anybody have any questions on the, um, the study group before I shut this recording off? Or really any questions or anything yeah so so tony i have a comment sure yeah i just want to tell the team that uh i recommend that uh you guys uh, sometime after this before the next session you guys go over the study uh uh the the lab guide i'm sorry yeah and uh i'll try to be on discord from 7 to 9 p.m uh every night if you need someone to to walk you through this because i've already done it twice uh, so I just recommend it so like nobody falls behind. So yeah, and this is this kind of like a sort of like a Netflix kind of thing too. So like if you yeah. do miss a bunch of these, you can come back later. But we're always going to be on Discord, right? So um, even if it's a question that happened from the first session or whatever, then we'll be able to kind of rewind back to you know through the breadcrumbs <laughs> that we put as a trail, right, to be able to figure out what's going on. So yeah, thanks, John, for um for helping out on that too. That's no awesome. problem. Okay, well, I don't want to stand in between anybody and a Friday, um, you know, afternoon. So thanks for, for joining, and I'm going to go ahead and shut this thing off, and, you know, uh, feel free to ping us if you need help on anything. All right, have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. You too, John. All right, take care, everybody. Take care. Thanks, everybody. Take care.